<laughs> Does that look like a familiar sight? I bet all of you have something like this in your homes, or a lot of you anyways. Um, that's kind of my a pretty modest uh, collection of pedals. And um, you know what? Most of them live in boxes <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> they, uh, they don't see the light of day. They literally just sit on a shelf somewhere. And um, so I thought I would do a video just, you know, I did the video about budget versus premium guitars. And then I got thinking, what about pedals? Because uh, this is something else which uh, we as guitar players have serious gas for <laughs> guitar acquisition syndrome, of course. <laughs> so um, here's my kind of little collection of, of stuff that you can see. And you know what, out of all of these, I literally, on a daily basis, I use about this much. <laughs> it literally is a tiny, tiny amount of it. So what is the whole thing about, you know, acquiring pedals? I'm gonna take a seat here. And um, I'm gonna grab a couple of pedals, actually. I'm gonna grab a couple of my favorite pedals, yeah. You guys are familiar with this one, aren't you? <laughs> and um, I'm gonna show you this as well. And you know what? There are so many pedals down here, which are cool. This one, um, what else? This one, this one's pretty special. This was probably the first one I recorded with actually. Uh, Boss DS1 Distortion. And this is from, I think early 2000s. And I think this is a modified version. I kind of did a modification inside, kind of works oscillates a little bit but I had the original one and which I used a lot with uh, this guy here <laughs> the batteries come loose inside but there's a little kind of you know coin sized battery inside and it's come loose and it's rattling about and my pod 2.0 doesn't work anymore <laughs> I love this thing. In fact, the first recording um, that I did, which was, uh, which I released actually, um, Strange Day, uh, I actually used this, this, and a pedal I don't own anymore, which was a Soldano Supercharger GTO, which was incredible. It was a combination of these three. Um, this basically did a little bit more boost into the Soldano pedal, which was a preamp pedal. This, this did the cab simulation and some effects and stuff sometimes. Then it basically went into my interface. So my album Strange Day was actually recorded that way. Anyways, I'm going to put some of these down. One more actually. This was my first pedal. Still have it. I don't have the knobs anymore. <laughs> but I still have it. The Boss HM2 Heavy Metal pedal. And uh, this is actually quite revered by, kind of, I think, the Swedish thrash bands or something like that. Anyways, it's there's a version of this which is uh, sought after, very, very, very sought after. And uh, mine still works. I did a video on it, which, uh, hey, man, have a listen. Have a listen to this pedal. <laughs> and honestly, I bought this pedal because it said heavy metal on it. So, you know what? I'm going to grab a couple of pedals which are at the opposite end of the spectrum. And uh, this is an interesting one for me because over the last few years, um, I have completely stopped buying pedals for the most part. I will buy something if I don't have something which already does the job I need it to. Um, but I won't buy it just because, you know, I want a new pedal or I want to try a new sound or something like that. Because most of the time I plug this guy in and 10 seconds later I've got, in fact not even 10 seconds, literally 2 seconds later I've got the tone that I want and I'm ready to record. Which is really important for me because, you know, I'm a professional musician, I, I do this every day and I need to record, I need to get into the studio. And the one thing that used to really bog me down was just setting up gear and setting up a sound and getting the sound I wanted. Just 
you know, by the time I sometimes got it micing up the amp and tweaking it, and I was too tired to record. So it was the next day, and then that would turn into the next week, and the next month, etc., etc. But having something like this around, where I can literally plug it in, and I've got an incredible sound really, really quickly, it is a huge bonus. So that got me thinking about budget versus premium pedals. So what's the deal with them? Um, well, I'll start off by saying, you know what, I completely understand why there's a wide spectrum of prices out there. Some stuff is built very quickly, very cheaply, and it serves a purpose, you know. I remember when I was a student, I, I couldn't afford to spend like 200 bucks on a, on a guitar pedal. <laughs> Needed to, you know, get supplies and food and things like that. You know, the last thing in your mind is, I will go out and buy a 200 pound guitar pedal. <laughs> you know, that wasn't really going to happen. That wasn't on the cards. And you know what, at the time I would have gone for something like this, which, which is the Joyo British Sound Pedal, which cost me 30 bucks. And you know what, this is, a, this is actually one of the exceptions to the rule. This sounds fabulous, absolutely fantastic sounding pedal. Now the one thing that I have kind of realized about the difference between premium and budget pedals is just the way that uh, the, uh, the premium pedals are built in terms of tone. So in my experience, with the premium pedals, it's very, very quick and easy to get a usable tone, which you know you don't have to screw within a mix, don't have to EQ, don't have to do anything to, which is why this has been probably the best investment I've made in terms of pedals, sounds, etc. in probably the last you know two, three years. It just works every single day. When I go into the studio, I plug this in and it just sounds beautiful, gives me the tone that I'm looking for. I'm literally ready to record within like three minutes. You know, turn on the computer, turn on Cubase, turn on my guitar, um, my blue guitar amp one, um, switch this on, plug in, plug in the battery pack, looking while I'm done. Uh, just plug my cable in, get recording. It's that easy. And that's what I really, really adore about the premium pedals. And it's something I've, I've realized about other premium pedals as well. So, you know, I um, also have uh, this right now, which is by Stefan at Red Stuff Amplification. Now, this is the borderline, which is actually an amplifier, but um, you may have seen that I did a couple of videos a couple of months ago of the 1987 pedal, which was ridiculously cool. That pedal was kind of, you know, it, it, it's going to live beside this because Stefan is building me a 1987 pedal. And you know what? It was just another one of those pedals where I plugged it in and got a really good tone within like 10 seconds. Uh, first time I played it and literally within 10 minutes I was recording a track. It was that, that, that good. And same thing with the BEOD. When I plugged it in first time, you know, it was one of those jaw drop moments where it was like, that's the perfect tone. It's just smooth. The uh, frequencies are all dialed in just right. And you know what? I can twiddle the knobs. I've got a sound. Great. Let's go and play. And that was the genius thing about it. Especially, I, I find the, the top end, the, the treble um, and the high mids on the, the uh, premium pedals to be much, much smoother. Just my experience, and you know what? You guys might have a different experience, uh, so I would love to hear from you anyways, which I'm gonna ask you to do, leave a comment later. But that's been my experience, you know, and I've kind of purchased other pedals along the way. Um, so, you know, like I said, this one's been really cool, the Joyo uh, British Sound. And, you know, this actually has a cab emulation in there, and all sorts of things. It just sounds really, really fabulous. Nice and smooth. I do find with this pedal that I do screw around with the EQ quite a lot. And you know, even if I'm trying to get a sound like this, I'll be messing around with this a lot longer than I would with the BEOD. It's a Friedman, it's lovely. <laughs> and by the way, um, those of you guys in the UK, in, in the South, uh, Dave Friedman, and Sam Bollock are going to be at Anderton's Music 
this Thursday, so two days time from when I'm releasing this, this is Tuesday today, so um, it, they're going to be there on um, on Thursday between I think about 12 and 4, so um, if you want to go see Dave Friedman and ask him some questions, head down to Anderton's in Guildford. Yeah, I'm going to head down, I'm, I, I want to go see Dave because he's a friend of mine and you know he's a super cool guy. He builds these, which are just awesome. <laughs> so that's my first point about the, the difference between premium and budget pedals. And I have a bunch of other budget pedals as well. Let's see if I can find a couple here. Uh, so the Red Devil by um, K-Line and also the Frontline Overdrive pedal. <laughs> now these are super cheap as well. They're like, you know, this is probably like 15 bucks and this is like 10 bucks and somebody gave this to me. But you know what? Um, I have plugged this pedal in a few times and it sounds good. It, it gives a cool metal sound and stuff, but you know, it, I end up just twiddling knobs, twiddling, twiddling, twiddling. Um, so yeah, that, that's, a, that's a big point for me. You know, um, I, I want to be able to record really, really quickly, which is why I keep going back to the premium stuff. And with this whole thing, I kind of find it the same with other types of pedals as well. So my delay pedals, I use a Strymon El Capistan or a TC Electronic Flashback Mini. They both sound fantastic and I do have other delay units, but you know, again, they sound okay, but I end up kind of just tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. And it just drives me mad. <laughs> <laughs> I want simplicity and um, you know if the tone of something is really really good then it's going to be really easy to use and it's something I've come to understand over the last few years especially because I've recorded so much and doing the videos or doing kind of you know my YouTube channel um, all the videos for that recording you know audio tracks while I'm tracking video and stuff like that it's been really important to have a really excellent sound which I can get eat every single time I plug my gear in. Even playing live, you know, I want that sound to be really inspiring. And when I'm kind of trying to listen to the sound and you know, I'm hearing kind of either a pedal or an amp or something which doesn't quite do it for me, I'm more focused on the tone than I am on my playing and inevitably make mistakes, etc., etc. Just the way I roll, I guess. So, you know, um, like I said, the uh, Strymon stuff, love that. I actually have a couple of Carl Martin pedals, which uh, they're just excellent. They're absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the uh, Delayla XL um, delay unit, which I should use much, 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 much more often because it sounds absolutely just fabulous. It's a really great unit. And the Headroom Reverb unit as well, which I actually won in a competition which uh, um, Robert Baker had done a couple of years back. <laughs> Yay, I won it! <laughs> and you know, fantastic spring reverb unit, but it sits on my shelf a lot of the time and I kind of feel guilty that it's there because it, it needs to be used. Yeah, it has to be used. So, that's the first point. The um, other point, I guess the second point is just the build quality of, uh, of pedals. Now I have pedals in varying um, price ranges. And um, you know, the Boss DS1 is a 30 buck pedal, very robust, very utilitarian. It's there to be used, great design. It doesn't feel as premium as this. It doesn't feel as nice as holding this or, um, you know, turning the knobs. It, it, everything on on the BE, the Friedman pedals, and the other Friedman pedals as well, which I have, just feels kind of just slightly more expensive, I guess, slightly more higher end. And uh, again, this just enhances the experience of using something. If something feels great to to use, then you're going to use it more. Kind of like when I was talking about the guitars last time, the budget versus premium guitars, and I was saying how um, back in the day, you know, premium get, uh, budget guitars, I should say, budget guitars weren't built that great. You know, the fretboards weren't fantastic. Fret ends might be sharp and stuff, and the you know the action might be high. The experience of playing it wasn't as good as playing a, a more expensive guitar. Um, now the 
the divide has become much, much closer. So when I kind of pick up something which is mid-range, now this is this this is where it kind of gets a bit confusing. Now. So if I pick up like let's say this one here, which is the X5 um, Golden Brownie, the Thomas Blue pedal. Uh, excellent sounding pedal, built really well, feels really great, you know. This is slightly more expensive, you know, the, I think these retail for like a, a close to a hundred bucks or something like that. So it's in that middle ground. <laughs> So we're getting into a gray area here. <laughs> so it is less than this, but it is more than this. So middle ground, you know. So does this feel as good? You know what, it does. The knobs actually feel pretty good. It feels very robust. It's you know, got some weight to it. And this, like I said, it's 30, 35 buck pedal. Ex exception to the rule though, in my experience, I think. Whereas, the uh, K-Line Red Devil pedal, does it feel as good? No, this, this feels different. I can definitely feel the difference between, you know, the, the build quality of this one and uh, the BE and also the the, um, uh, the Joyo pedal as well. Now in this mid-range, there are a lot of companies um, doing pedals at very, very similar price points and similar build qualities, etc, etc. This is where it gets really, really tricky in terms of picking a pedal because they all pretty much claim to do the same thing. And, you know, does one sound better than the other? No, that's a very subjective thing. People's musical tastes are different, obviously. You know, people play different styles of music. They're gonna be looking for a different tone, different sounds. All of our ears are different. We're gonna hear stuff differently. So I love the sound of this, but some people might be like, meh. So it's okay, you know, it's it's kind of high gain pedal. Uh, they might be looking for something warmer, like a, you know, a dumble type sound or something like that. So this isn't gonna do it for them, you know? Some people are gonna absolutely be looking for like that JCM 800 type of sound, which this does really well. And that's absolutely cool because, like I said, everyone's tastes are different and we're all kind of trying to, replicate that tone we hear and it's going to inspire us. And I think that's the, the the really important thing about this as well. Whenever we, we pick gear, whenever we pick pedals, a sound, it's got to inspire something. That's what we're buying it for, right? We're not just buying it so that it sits on a shelf and we can say, we have one of those. <laughs> you know, it basically just gathers dust and then you got to kind of dust it. And, well, in my case, they just all sit in boxes, <laughs> literally. They just all stack up in boxes and sit on a shelf in my um, my studio. Whereas this guy is on my desk all the time and it really does inspire me. And between this, um, the uh, Red Stuff 1987 pedal, and now I have a Bogner Uberschall pedal, which is just ridiculously cool. Love that thing. It is such a great, great sound. I just use these because um, I know that they're gonna give me the tone that I am looking for and I'm gonna be able to record really quickly. So it's coming back to that whole thing. You know, it's kind of the convenience thing, I guess, for me, but also tying into that thing about what inspires you, what, what sound are you looking for? You know, are you looking for the high gain stuff or are you looking for, let's say, something like this, the Sweet Leo, which is, um, you know, it's not a super high gain pedal, it's a low gain pedal, it's a kind of overdrive -y type of pedal. This sounds wonderful, it's beautiful sounding pedal, uh, but, you know, does it do what this does? No, it's, it's different, you know, the EQ is different, the structure is different, it, would I use this um, in recording? Of course, yeah, if I needed this sound, then I would use it. Again, price point difference. This is about half the price of this one. And then we have something like this guy here. 
<laughs> which is my custom tube screwer. Um, I built this. I built this from a kit from a website called musicding.de and it's called the Screamer TS808 and uh, you guys can guess what, what this is uh, a replica of and I actually have one of the original um, Tube Screamer chips in here um, and basically that gives me my, my tone from this pedal I used this a whole lot when I was running my um, my sound through an amp, and even when I, you know, originally got the Blue Guitar amp one, and I needed a boost into it, this was the guy because this is just, you know, fantastic sounding tube screamer. It cost me like 30 bucks. It was like 29 euros plus a little bit of shipping, maybe five bucks shipping, a little bit of time to build it, and it's, you know, just fantastic sounding tube screamer. One of the best sounding tube screamers that I have used. <laughs> So even this has had a massive amount of use and it's been really, really helpful to me. So the question which keeps coming up in my mind about pedals these days is why do we feel the need to buy so many <laughs> as guitar players, as musicians? Why do we need the next piece of gear? When we really ask ourselves, you know, do we actually need it? Often, you know what, I keep coming back to the conclusion that I don't. Just me personally <laughs> and I can understand why people want to buy gear but why do we purchase gear which actually just gathers dust um, you can have like 50 pedals a hundred pedals are you actually gonna use them I know I don't I like I said I use a handful of pedals so what is it about pedals which just makes us want to buy the newest the latest <laughs> <laughs> the most innovative, you know, for whatever reason. Because often, you know what, uh, people do go back to using vintage gear as well. You know, and get a lot of people go and spend a lot of money on a gear from, like, you know, way back when, like original tube screamers, uh, echoplexes, things like that. You know, they they go for big, big, big money, much more than something like this, or, or any of the pedals that I own. So, what makes people buy those as well? You know, why go for the vintage stuff? Does it sound better? Does it sound different? Does the modern stuff not actually come up to, to par? Which leads on to another train of thought, which is I actually have a couple of um, uh, Digitech um, Ice Stomp pedals, which are basically pedals which I can change what type of pedal it is uh, via an application on my, my iPhone. So that basically gives me access to a ton of different sounds. Um, are they all authentic? I don't know, I haven't checked them over with the pedals which they're supposed to be modeling. Do they sound good? Yeah, they sound really good. You know, there are some models on there like uh, models of the, um, uh, the Boss uh, chorus pedal, the CE2 I think it was called, um, and things like that which sound absolutely phenomenal. You know, it has a patch on there which does a lexicon reverb <laughs> and it sounds really lush and big and full so you know what the, the technology is there to kind of recreate these and like I showed you, you know, I, I actually have a pedal which which I built myself which is a copy of a tube screamer is an original tube screamer much much better is it worth me spending five six seven hundred bucks on an original tube screamer just so that I can say that I have it and does it come down to that that actually we possess it because you know then we can say hey I have one of those <laughs> and if it is why do we do that is it just to possess it is it just to have it as a you know uh, as a decoration on the wall or is it going to be something that is genuinely useful now obviously sound quality is a big factor in it if something vintage is going to sound incredible and I know it's going to do a certain thing, then yeah, I, I can completely see the justification in spending the money. But um, I mentioned the Necoplex, right? My Scrymon El Capistan pedal is an emulation of uh, a, a tape echo. It's phenomenal. I love the sound of it. It has the wow, flutter, etc. It's basically based on the Echoplex type of sound. But you know what? It doesn't have all the issues that an Echoplex has. The tape, changing the tape, finding the tape. It's old, 
uh, so some of the components inside would have deteriorated, etc, etc. Needs maintenance. It's about this big, <laughs> you know? So maybe I'm getting 90% or 95% off the sound and the tone of an original Echoplex, maybe a little bit less, but you know what? It sounds fantastic. So what would make me go and buy an original Echoplex over something like that? And uh, I guess that shoots off in a different direction now, which is, is technology getting so close now that, um, you know, pedals are becoming so, so good, especially in the, uh, the mid and premium range. Are they getting so good that, you know, the vintage gear is only going to be purchased by those people who really want to say, I have vintage gear. Is it? gonna make that much of a difference in terms of tone and sound and stuff so I would love to hear from people who have vintage gear vintage pedals um, because I, I don't I don't have them um, very many vintage pedals my vintage pedals are my uh, my heavy metal pedal <laughs> my boss DS1 and um, I actually have um, here's a piece of vintage gear <laughs> this was the first processor I, I, I ever bought my Yamaha FX 550 I guess it's vintage because you know I bought this in like 1990 something 92 or something so yeah I've, I've had this for quite a while <laughs> almost 30 years so that's that, that's quite an old piece of gear um, do I have anything else I probably do you know there's, there's probably like bits and pieces which I have which which are from back in the day and stuff um, does, do they sound good? I can't remember how this thing sounds. I haven't plugged in for, for, for ages. <laughs> the heavy metal pedal sounds kind of like you know, the heavy metal pedal. <laughs> Would I switch it for this one? Hell no. <laughs> this sounds amazing. And another thought, which is uh, especially with overdrive pedals. Now this is specific to these preamp stroke overdrive pedals. I have one of these. I have the Dirty Shirley pedal the Buxton um, Boost pedal, and also uh, the Bogner Uberschall pedal. Now, um, this has the vibe of a B100. Does it sound exactly like a B100? You know what, it's not going to um, exactly replicate it because I'm putting it through a different amplifier. But I have played the amp, I've also played the BE50 Deluxe amplifier. Um, at NAMM earlier this year, actually in January. And NAMM's coming up in January again in a couple months time, yay! <laughs> and honestly, when I got back and I plugged this in and um, into my, um, my Blue Guitar Amp 1 and with my impulse responses, it felt like I was playing that B50. I had that same vibe. It felt really good. And recently I have been plugging this into the incredible and absolutely phenomenal um, hot tone loudster pedal or amplifier. It's a power amplifier. So I've been plugging this into my Strymon, Strymon into the uh, hot tone loudster and that into a cab. And again, it feels like I'm playing a, a BE amp. <sighs> and it's about this big and I'm getting that tone and that feel, it feels like I am plugged into a tube amp. watts. Yeah, this is awesome. So 
Have these uh, premium pedals gotten so good that actually, you know what, the, the, especially the preamp pedals, um, they're, uh, they're a real contender to, to replace a much bigger rig. Would I still buy a B100? No, I wouldn't actually. I would go and buy the B50 Deluxe because that I just like that amp a little bit better. <laughs> but I would buy that amplifier. Um, but honestly, you know what? In, in what I do personally, it would just sit on the wall because I don't go out and play live or anything like that. So I don't need a huge amp. Uh, even my rattle amp just sits on the, the shelf there. So this gets used a lot, 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 lot more. And when I have considered um, purchasing a uh, Freedom Amp, which I have numerous, numerous times. Um, I've always come back to that conclusion. I would love to have it, but it's gonna kind of gather dust, just my, like my Randall Amp. So I'm kind of going back to, to this guy. So some food for thought for you on that front as well. So there you go, guys. Just some thoughts on this whole big mess of an area. <laughs> My preference is always now towards these premium pedals uh, and it's simply because of the convenience of being able to plug in, get the sound really, really super quickly and then just get going. That's important to me, now, that's my primary objective because of what I do for a living. But I know that everyone else's will change. So I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on it? What have your experiences been with, um, with pedals? The cheaper ones, the more expensive ones. I've gone through a whole range of them over the last you know, 30 odd years while I've been playing. You know, started off with really cheap pedals, went to slightly more expensive pedals, went to kind of uh, cheap pedals again to try and get the sound of an expensive pedal, and then eventually it was like, you know what? <laughs> the premium pedals really do sound good, <laughs> so it's just stick with them. Because <laughs> they do it for me. So there you go guys, um, I shall give you some clips now to listen to, some more clips, so that you can check out what some of these beautiful, beautiful pedals sound like. Enjoy and leave a comment, leave a comment, I do want to hear from you. And if you haven't done so already, uh, you can check out the uh, video that I did about the budget versus premium guitars as well. And also sub to the channel if you haven't done so already by clicking the uh, subscription button and the notification button and give it a thumbs up as well. Thank you guys. Have an incredible day. I am really looking forward to hearing from you on this subject. Here's some sounds for you. Have a great day. Bye.